flow. Today, we're going to look at how we can use Caldera Data Flow to detect in real time fraudulent transactions within a stream of user transactions. So within Caldera Data Flow, we're going to use NiPy to collect those messages or receive those messages in real time over the network. NiPy will make calls to a machine learning model to get a scoring that will tell us the likelihood that each one of those transaction data points are actually a fraud or not. And it will enrich the original message, the original flow file with the result of machine learning model score. And then it will route that message in, in, in different ways. If the scoring is already very high, it's very likely that the transaction is a fraud. It will immediately route that to a Kafka topic where the downstream applications can uh, get these transactions to take some action. For example, send a notification to the service customer service to contact the user immediately. It will also store the data in Kudu for if you want to do additional analytics later using Impala and Kudu. And it will also route all the enriched data into a Kafka topic that we can use straight away to do additional real-time analytics using Flink and SQL Stream Builder. SQL Stream Builder will look for additional fraud characteristics in that stream. If it finds more fraud, it will write that data to another Kafka topic that can also be used by downstream applications to take action on that information. And we'll write the results of that analysis also to Kudu so that we can use Caldera data visualization to get that data and plot dashboards uh, on what's happening at the moment. So let's have a look at how we do this in Caldera data, data flow. So my environment here, it's just a small demo environment. It has everything that I need and even more. Uh, I won't be using all these services here, only a subset. Today, we're only gonna be touching on a, a subset of those and I'll, I'll walk you through each one of them. So to start with, uh, we start with NiPy. So I have a flow in NiPy that's actively collecting data and doing those first steps that I explained in the diagram. So here, hopefully you guys can see this. We are listening on a port, receiving for the transaction data that an external agent, an external application is sending to us. So this application is coming. Now if I get that data in real time, attach a schema name to that uh, each one of those messages. Uh, so that it can open the message uh, with the help of that schema. In CDP, we do use schema registry to store schemas centrally, so you don't have to have schemas copied across many different places. Uh, and IFI can easily, oops, can easily integrate with schema registry to get those schemas from there. One advantage of schema registry is that not only keeps the schemas central, so many applications can be used, but it keeps track of changes in the schema. So if this schema changes over time, it will keep the several different versions of this. It will make sure that uh, you don't introduce in any backward incompatibility or any incompatibility with previous schemas, uh, depending on how you, you, you define the properties of this. So back to NiFi, we then attach a schema name that will be used to fetch that schema for that particular type of data uh, from schema registry. Then for each message that comes through, we open the message uh, and use the content of that message to do a scoring against the machine learning model that I have running in, in Caldera Machine Learning. Uh, the result of this machine learning model is a score. If I stop my processor here, we can take a quick peek at what that looks like. We can see that we have the original message in here, and we also have the model response that gives me a fraud score, telling me whether this is likely to be a fraud or not. Uh, the score here is 93% of likelihood to be a fraud. So this is a, a candidate that we'll have to look into um, and, and take some action based on, on this information. So we got this data, then we enrich the, the flow file with the result of that uh, of that response that we got from the model. Then uh, we check the model with score. If the score is greater than a certain threshold that here I set it to uh, 90%, it immediately forwards that to Kafka topic. And 
we could have downstream applications listing on this Kafka topic to take immediate, immediate action on that information. So every time we detect a new high likelihood that something is a fraud, it could, for example, send a message to customer service to call the customer immediately or block their credit card. It also gets the enriched message and it forwards it routes that to different places. It routes to a Kafka topic called transaction. And I can use this to do additional real-time processing of these transactions even before we, we persist that on disk. And for historical purposes, I also writing everything that I receive into a Kudu table. So later I can go to Kudu and, and search for historical transactions or do some sort of OLAP analytics on, on that data that I have there, right? But once we have the data here, uh, we can use all the tools that we have in CDP to continue that real-time streaming processing that we have. And what I'm going to show you here today is uh, a tool that we call SQL Stream Builder. SQL Stream Builder is a tool that was built on top of Flink, which is our stream processing, real-time stream processing engine in uh, CDP. And what SQL Stream Builder does is it allows you to write SQL to query streaming data and, and enrich that with other data that may or may not be streaming uh, without having to write a single line of Java or Scala code, which is which are the languages that are supported by the Flink API. So in SQL Stream Builder, you purely write SQL. And when you press execute, it will compile or encapsulate that as a Flink job uh, for you, submit the job to the cluster, and, and then the job will uh, do the analysis, do the transformations on the data that you're receiving in real time. It, it can do a number of things with that. It can send that data to back to Kafka. It can write to databases. It can do uh, a number of things. So here uh, we saw that we have data coming in that transactions topic. So I want to start writing SQL to that. So the first thing I need to do is to define a table that is mapped to that SQL transactions topic in Kafka. Tables in SQL Stream Builder, they are not physical tables. They are just a mapping or a view that points to a source of data that could be either the streaming source or non stream sources as well. So here I created transactions table, which is a table that has the structure derived from that schema that we have in the schema registry, and it points to a Kafka topic, in, in this case, the transactions topic. So when I do a select from this table, I'm actually reading data from that topic. But once I have a table, I can start writing my SQL queries against the topic. And what I get here is real-time data that is streaming through the topic at this moment. So when I press execute, um, this job is executed to my filling cluster. And in the console here, I'll have I'll be able to see samples of the data coming through that topic. So I see all of the data from the transactions. I see the fraud score that we receive from the model when we use to enrich the data. So now I can start doing some more interesting analytics in real time. So I stopped this job. I already have a analytics job to uh, running here. And here we are doing something a little bit more complex, right? So here I have a query that I'm reading from that transactions table, and I'm actually doing a self join of the transactions table with itself. So when I join those two tables, I join the rows by account ID, and I make sure that I, now let me change the color here because it's easier again. So when I join these two tables here, I join them by account ID. And I also make sure that uh, I'm joining transactions with different ID. So I want to join one transaction from an account to all the transactions of the same account. And what I'm looking for are transactions that happen very close to each other at very far geographical distances uh, from each other. So if a transaction happened in San Francisco uh, at midday, and at midday, 15 past midday, we had another uh, transaction from the same account happening in New York. It's very likely that one of those two transactions is a fraud because it's a very large distance for you to cover in 15 minutes. So this is what we're trying to do here. So we join these two tables. We get two transactions of the same account, and we're interested 
in transactions that happen within 10 minutes of each other, but are made in two geographical points that are more than one kilometer distance from each other. So if these two conditions happen, we flag that as a possible fraud. So this will retrieve the information from those transactions. But the interesting thing here is um, I want to enrich that flow or that stream of data with more information about th those accounts, for example. So I don't want only the account uh, detail, uh, transaction details, but I also want the account details. I want the name of the person, what's the type of credit card that they have, what's the number of the credit card, what's their phone, if I want to call them. So I, I want to enrich that stream of data with some lookup data. And this lookup data doesn't come from a streaming source. It could be in a database, it could be in, in MySQL, Oracle. In my case here, I have a table of customers in my Kudu cluster. Uh, Kudu is an operational database that we have in, in CDP. And uh, I chose Kudu to store that data because I can perform very fast lookups in Kudu. So the interesting thing about SSB is that I can also map a SSB table to a Kudu table. And SSB doesn't make much distinction between those. I can actually mix the streaming sources with non-streaming sources in the same SQL. So here I'm joining two, two Kafka topics. Um, for my transaction uh, checks. And to the result of that join, I'm doing another join of that stream with uh, my Kudu table to get the details about the accounts. So in the end, I can have my stream enriched with the account information and the user information that I have here. So when I run this, and this job is actually already running, I can have a look at a sample of the data that's coming from there. And here we see that now we have the transactions that were flagged as, as frauds. And I have the, the data here for one transaction, the, the coordinates for the other transaction, the amount of one of them, and also the details for the user accounts associated with all of those, which is coming from uh, my lookup data in Kudu. So when I generate this data, uh, what I want to do is I, again, I want to put that back in Kafka in a topic so that my downstream applications can use this information to take uh, the appropriate actions. So I, the, the way we do this in SSP is simply run uh, insert into another table that's mapped to that Kafka topic. So when I do this, SSB will automatically execute this query here and insert the result into that or the table which is mapped to a topic. I have another job running here, which is uh, used to get the data from this topic. That's the result of my query. And I also want to save this data to Kudu, both for historical purposes and also because I want to use Kudu to enable my dashboard. So in here, I run a simple SQL that simply reads from that fraudulent table, which is, a, again, it's a Kafka topic and insert into a Kudu fraudulent transaction table, which is a, a slightly different table, but is, is in store in Kudu, right? So once this job runs, it will get that data that we are generating from that analytical query that we run before. And it will also store that data information in uh, Kudu. Once we have the data there, we can create dashboards and uh, with Cloudera database. So in my example here, I created a simple dashboard that shows me uh, the results of my uh, real-time streaming queries. So I have here the total amount of transactions that I have so far and my uh, during the time that I'm analyzing this. Uh, of this amount, I have a certain amount of fraudulent transactions that has affected the number of customers. I have the history here per minute of frauds that we detected what's the breakdown by different cards, and even I can show in real time what's happening on uh, interactive map uh, in here. So this is the end of the actual fraud demo. I hope that you guys enjoyed. One more thing that I want to point out here is that all of this happens under the control of uh, CDP. In CDP, everything is 
all, all these services are integrated with each other and are managed or have a, a common security and governance layer uh, where you can manage all of that. So Ranger is the tool that we use to control those policies. So those security policies that control the access to all these components that I showed to you, they are centrally managed through Apache Ranger, where I can go and centrally define everything that all the access that I want to grant in my cluster and also contains central audit log where you can see who has access, which data, and when that happened, when the access was denied or it was successful. And also as part of this common layer, we have a patch atlas, which we use to create a data dictionary about all the data that you have in your cluster, not only in, in Kafka and in, in, in iFi, et cetera, but in the whole of CDP. So Atlas is integrated with all the components in CDP, uh, but in Cloudera Dataflow, uh, all these components that we, we looked at today generate the information that's collected by Atlas and you can go in Atlas and search for information about Kafka topics, NiFi flows, etc. So for example, if I show, if I look for a, a NiFi flow path here, I can see all the different transformations and, 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 and connections that I have uh, in NiFi. So for example, if I click on publishing data to the Kafka topic, I can see the information here about that operation that's happening in NiFi. I can see the relationship of that to like what are the inputs and outputs and even visualize the lineage of that so I can see what's happening to my data. And this is an interact interactive graph. So I can click on specific entities and drill down and, and see what's happening to my data, where the data is coming from and where it's going to.